What's up guys, welcome back for another knife installment and in part 3 of my Let's Talk Tucson Knives mini-series. If you saw the first parts, which are the 12 here that I showcased, uh, thank you, I appreciate that. And if you're interested in seeing more on these 12, definitely go check that out. But I have 8 more for this batch that I wanted to go through, so I'm going to try to get through this video a little quicker to see if I can get through those 8. If not, I'll just do 6 and then do a part 4 and wait till I get some more Tucson's in to finish those. But, um, yeah, let's get started. First up, I have the TS-334 here by Night Morning. And the uh, set that I have here are pretty eclectic as far as the variety. Pretty uh, nice, interesting little batch, though. But this should be a good video compared to uh, all this titanium and carbon fiber in the last two parts. But as you can see here, we got this, like, burlap-y um, micarta. This brown, and I actually like the micarta. It came nicely polished. I did just clean it up a little bit, like get, getting all the frayed edges off. Got this spear point shaped blade. Really a uh, sweet grind here. It's a thumb stud opener. And then 14C on this one, night morning design, like I said. Your budget clip. And then these uh, titanium pivot collars. This is an inset liner lock, and then you have a uh, nested liner on this side, in inset steel, so that's good, a little bit more rugged instead of just the micarta. A little bit of jimping here, but you don't really get much traction since it sits flush with the, uh, with the scales, and then it's not really deep enough to get that good of a bite, but... I mean, if you're pressing in there, you'll you'll get an okay um, grip on the jimping. The action on this one is, even though it's on double row ceramic ceramic bearings, which I thought was pretty cool for this budget knife, it's um kind of got a bit of a stiff pivot, so it doesn't like drop as freely as my other ones, but it still is pretty smooth once it gets past that that tightness of the pivot. Um, but yeah, overall. Still pretty smooth and centering is pretty good. On um, this one, um, this little bit right here does work as a front flipper. It's not what I would call like a true front flipper. It's more of like a pseudo front flipper, but it works as one. And uh, yeah, it's good to go on that end. So that is pretty cool. This jimping actually works better for the front flipper, so maybe that's what it was more intended for I, I suppose and then again your thumb studs act as the stop but you do have your your thick pin pin here for uh, the close position and as always I love the fact that Tucson uses the thick stop pins but really sweet design not having the uh, flipper tab here you don't have to worry about you know anything um, you know, having a late detent is what I, I'm trying to say. But your detent angle, normal, you pass it. That little bump can hit your finger there. Um, but like I said, my pivot's a little tight, so that doesn't really happen for this knife. And then, as you uh, can see, you do have that forward finger choil. So it can choke up quite nicely. Good ergos. Comfortable, being that this is a rounded handle. Yeah, that's the uh, TS-334 here by uh, Night Morning, and I am liking this little guy. Pretty good EDC. And all of these knives um, I either got from White Mountain Knives or uh, eBay. For this one, I paid 40 bucks for it, 41 So next up, we have the TS-26. This is a, another Night Morning design, and this is a classic. Real old Tucson in D2. Nice detent. I really like this blade shape. Very unique, interesting blade shape. You have a recurve, this like harpoon, reverse tonto. It's just got a lot going on, but uh, definitely really cool blade shape. The uh, only thing is your plunge grind ends right where your sharpening choil should be, where you should have one. So yeah, you're going to end up getting a smile real quick. old night morning uh, logo and then he did put these like thumb stud um 
whatever you call these on here even though you have a flipper so these only really work for like a slow roll you can't really do it too well i'm trying to flick it out and then yeah i'm not right-handed and working around the camera is awkward but i do uh note that they do work quite well for a reverse flick come on you can get like the meat of your finger in to this area pretty good and then with that jimping on the uh the uh, stud there and i failed it <laughs> i was pressing up press, pressing on the lock bar but uh yeah you can reverse flick it and you'll be all right on that end and then one thing is this knife has a really late detent um that kind of bugs me i mean look at how late that is that's ridiculous it should not be that far so by the time it passes it completely clears it it's here the flipper tab is gone it's never going to hit your finger so on this one i do have to kind of use it more as a stop while controlling the lock bar and then going all the way so there is a couple of earlier night morning twosomes so yeah i got kind of stuck right there and got to use a little bit of that inertia to get past it um but yeah some of the older two sons that night morning did he just got those later detents and the action kind of functions like that in totality where you have to manipulate it and control the lock bar to get that nice smooth overall action you would want so that's the only kind of bad thing on this one but it does have nice milling and um just the finish overall for being an older school two sun I do like this pocket clip and then the blue anodizing that they did. This pocket clip actually works quite well for being an older model. Good ramp and uh, yeah, even though the clearance is low, it, it still functions nicely. The tension's right. You got your backspacer with the um, integrated lanyard hole and then kind of your gear style. Overall, this is a really cool classic Tucson, and I am happy to have this one in the collection. So there's uh, that one here, the TS26, and still really smooth. Um, and for that one, I paid, I did pay a little bit more of a markup, uh, 147. I got that one on the bay for auction. So up next, we got this little guy here and I am really really loving this one another night morning here the TS338 um, I think this is the second or third button lock they did but this little guy is just a great knife overall I am enjoying this this is just fantastic um, we have these tan micarta handles, the titanium full style bolsters where they mill it out to put the scale on top, the onlay. Come on, I am having so much trouble with my camera. Hopefully it's not too much of a problem for you guys. Okay. And then the blade here, that black wash clip point, nice little blade. Really like that blade shape excellent large thumb studs they are a little bit sharp but being uh that this knife is pretty easy to flip out no problems there d2 on this one and then again that night morning uh branding how he did on the 313 your pocket clip here which works very well one problem though is it's set in my carta and you might end up getting a little bit of play after a while do need to be careful and watch that but it sits on that Chicago screw post pretty snugly. So as long as you tighten your screw down well, maybe use some Loctite, you should be okay. But definitely uh, something I don't really like to see. And Wong has done it before, but he'll at least put another pin in there for some added security. I would like Night Morning to do that at least. But that is one little negative as far as uh, having to watch for on this knife. The overall fit and finish is pretty good. 
but I did kind of improve it a little bit. Um, on this side, it was nice and flush. Everything sits up against the titanium pretty uh, cleanly. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, perfect up against these like corners, but it does look pretty good for the money. Um, and then I did like sand and smooth out this micarta even more. Just even though it was quite polished, just to give it a little bit of a cleaner look. I plan on uh, dyeing this maybe black or I don't know blue most likely black I'm not really a fan of this tan color but you got your uh, titanium backspacer and that lanyard post I do like it in the back here definitely better than just having a hole in the handle and then the uh, front side here it wasn't like as flush as the back because this is nice and flush so I didn't have to sand it a little bit to get that to mate up better and now it's sitting flush and looks good. But you got that pivot style again, that kind of bullet casing that we saw on the uh, 334 here. This one's a little bit smaller though. And then button lock again works very well. I wish the handle was maybe like a smidge lo uh, longer and then this was a smidge shorter. Maybe they should shorten this, gave it a little extra room here. But my fingers fit nice and snug on there. Just a little bit more room would have helped, though. But very comfortable ergos, and then you can choke up here. And my hand naturally wants to go to this position even more, so that does feel really good here in the uh, choked up forward finger choil position. But uh, this is a, a great little knife. Very, very slicey. With that tall flat grind, it comes to quite the thin edge. So definitely liking this uh, knife. Been enjoying this one. The jimping is great as well. You get a good traction and bite. And then with the ergos, you just lock in well. And uh, yeah, very, very smooth. Double row ceramic bearings on this guy. And then again, on all their button uh, locks, you do have to hold it for the blade to fall the way. If you let it go, then the blade will just stay where it's at. So I know for some people that's, I guess, a concern or something they want to know about the knife, like as compared to other button locks. So just something I'm pointing out. But no lock stick on this one, nice and smooth. And uh, yeah, I paid what was that like 98, 99 for that one. Um, but yeah, I got that from White Mountain Knives, and that's the TF338. Up next, we have another night morning. These are probably all night mornings. Actually, the last four aren't. So the first four are, the first four aren't, or the last four aren't. Um, but this is another classic, the TS57. This little guy here is um, a sweet little knife. I'm really liking this one. There are some things that do need to be mentioned about it, and we'll get there. But... As you can see, full titanium construction, very, very thin, skinny handle, something I really enjoy about it, but also a huge problem. So, and then the titanium, you can kind of see a little bit of the machining marks, being that this is, again, an older model, the uh, overall design and quality is a little more crude than what you would see nowadays. Like on the pocket clip here, um, um, it's a little rough, these edges. And then in here, yeah, you can see the machining marks again, how they pass through on the sides and kind of lift that. So not necessarily a bad thing, but just you can tell it's an older Tucson. And then especially because uh, the grind on this one, quite thick. It's not thin behind the edge by any means it is nice and sharp and it's still quite slicey um, but trying to get through cardboard not ideal but if you're going to do just like normal slicing definitely works uh, quite well here so you do just need to factor in what you're going to be cutting when it comes to their older models with their thicker grinds and then d2 the older night morning branding this knife does have a lot of uh milling and um it does look pretty cool i like all the uh micro milling and just the detailing here the 
finish could have been a little bit better, like I mentioned, but the fit up of this knife is fantastic. Everything just went together so well, came apart so well, and very easy. I mean, all two suns come apart and go together perfectly. Um, but yeah, backspacer. And uh, the big problem with this knife, though, like I had said, is even though the handle being thin is nice and comfortable, you get great ergonomics on this knife, um, access to the lock bar is a huge problem. You don't have much room, and you actually have negative lock, lock bar access. Um, that's, I don't know why you would do that, why you would make the lock bar lower than the other side, but trying to disengage the knife like this kind of hurts my finger because the uh, lock bar pressure is strong, does have strong tension. So pushing that to the side can hurt a little bit. And uh, yeah, trying to give it that nice smooth action like this is not quite easy for me. Um, with my left hand, my dominant hand, I don't have any problem accessing it or closing the knife, but it's definitely uh, reminiscent of the CVV Hadros. If you have that knife or tried that knife, the lock bar access is not good at all. Um, doable, but yeah, just not ideal and it can be um, a little frustrating, I guess. Because, you know, I want to be able to disengage the knife, let the flipper tab hit my finger, and then go the rest of the way. And then this one, being with the late detent angle too, that flipper tab, when it hits my finger, you don't really have much of it to hit your finger. So the pressure on the lock bar, um, yeah, just got to let it kind of swing past and then go the rest of the way. But uh, with that strong pressure of the lock bar, you do get a nice snappy detent, though. So that is kind of your trade-off there. A nice snappy action for this light blade. Um, but you don't get quite that smooth action with the light lock bar tension but that is the ts57 here a classic and i do like the slicer grind it has despite the behind the edge thickness not being uh, quite where i want it and then it does have that top open construction design which looks pretty cool that's the ts57 here by night morning so let's see next up we have the ts275 by H Design. I don't know this guy's uh, actual name, but he just goes by H Design. He's a Vietnamese guy, so his name is probably too hard for me to pronounce. And one thing I really did not like about this knife was this little... this. It looks like a sticker. Like, I almost wanted to scratch and peel it off as soon as I got it. And if you look real closely, you can see that they had, like, originally branded 14c 28n and then ts275 right under it so it's it seems like they had an original stamping and then put that over so it's faint but you can kind of see it there so eh, bothers me a little bit and then again with that uh, kind of sticker looking um branding on the uh, blade not exactly my favorite here. But overall, I do really like this knife. I think it looks just wicked cool. That blade shape is ridiculously sweet. You got this recurve drop point, uh, Tonto style, that like kind of late harpoon. Um, I really, really didn't call that a harpoon, but a little bit of thumb ramp. And then it does help for ergonomics. Ergonomics on this one are uh, a little... There, there's some stuff to be desired, I guess, left to be desired. It does feel comfortable, but it's just, it's wide. So it does feel like I'm, you know, holding something wide. My hands, my fingers fit up where they should be, but I could have done without that bump. Right here, I can kind of feel it on my ring finger. So I would like to get this smoothed out and uh, just machined, have that somebody go and just kind of knock that down and round it and get this uh, handle looking much better. But I can kind of see why he did that. It has a symmetrical contrast with the uh, that late harpoon um, thumb ramp here. So you can kind of see that symmetrical look. 
but the grind on this hollow grind is a bit thick it's not your like super skinny thin razor sharp um hollow grind like what i saw in the ts300 here it's a bit more of a robust hollow grind which makes sense for this kind of blade shape you know this is more of a piercy stabby uh slicer with that kind of recurve here but you do want to leave a little bit of of strength behind that edge and uh one thing i found very interesting about this knife is the construction it's a frame lock but they went in and entirely milled the uh i won't be able to get it on camera but they milled out these uh frames so they're fully skeletonized and then they use the carbon fiber inlays here to cover it so this thing is quite light for being as big as it is nice pocket clip works well and then as always the carbon fiber is just gorgeous um I do like, as always, the uh, clips that have this style with the integrated lanyard in the back. Even though I don't use lanyards, the only knife I have a lanyard on is my Sebenza. So, but overall, just a sweet, sweet blade shape and knife. Your detent angle, a bit on the later end. And because of that, where the flipper tab hits your finger, um, you do kind of just gotta use the flipper tab as a buffer and again control the lock bar um yeah because where it passes it so you can get it but you have to get like in the right spot but very smooth action and yeah and then it's got that centering groove which is nice full backspacer I did lighten the detent on this one, the lock bar pressure, to help kind of with that action and to get it past the detent. Because if it does get stuck, I can kind of just knock it forward real easy and it'll get past it. But that's the uh, TS-275 here. And I'm going to do one more. Um, so I'll just do the six and I'll do the two, save those two for the next video. But the last one I got here for this batch is a monster, guys. It's the TS-175 by Tepe Design. This thing is awesome. It's a beast. This is way bigger than I expected it to be. I was expecting it to be this size at first. And yeah, as you can see, that is not the case. And then once I figured out it was going to be bigger, I was expecting it to be more like, I don't know, like this. But as you can see, this thing is a chonker. It is by no means a small knife, but I love that. I love the fact that this thing is massive. I love that Tonto, that drop point Tonto. Excellent. And it's very thin behind the edge. So that is great. This thing is super slicey with that tall flat grind. They left the tip slicey and thin too, but um, you do get a, de a decent enough thickness with that distal taper. It still uh, is quite good enough for a piercing ergonomics are great i'm usually not a fan of like that bulbous back end but the way it looks on this knife it it contrasts very well with the pointy tonto shape and it's not too like bulbous where it doesn't feel right in the hand but yeah black wash blade thumb stud nicely centered i mean just an awesome, awesome knife, brown micarta, and then your backspacer with the lanyard pin. I do have to hurry up here. You have that excellent sharpening choil. You have plenty of life in this blade. This thing will last forever. Um, I did polish up this micarta and get it looking, you know, nice and right for the camera, but also just for my preferences. It did have that little black dot there, so I was kind of eh about that. But overall, just a sweet, sweet tepe here. This thing is heavy, but it's well balanced, so it doesn't feel heavy since it comes out in at like six ounces. But I do like the way it looks in this closed position. And yeah, this is everything I got. Um, I'm all done here, guys. So please like and subscribe. I got two more, but I'll save it on the next one for part four. And yeah, have a good one. I'll see you later.